I came up with this list from the perspective of a new player, key term there, new player, starting from scratch, who hypothetically got to play through each race class combination up to about level 20. In, say, 1999 or early 2000, maybe right after Kunar came out, but without the help of all the maps and all the wikis and all the websites and things that'll give you leveling guides and tips and shows you where everything is. And how they would look at the cities in this game and what was best, what was worst. The specific parameters I looked at were, number one, layout. How are the cities laid out? Is it easy for a new player to find their guild master, the bank, key merchants, like spells? Are they not going to get too lost? Number two... How's the newbie zone? How's the newbie starting area? Just the general area where the player starts, you know, as they try to level up. Not just, you know, turn in your note, but how are you getting to level 5? How are you getting to level 10? What's the area outside the city like? And number three, this is the most subjective part of this, but it's just the nostalgia that I feel like each city encapsules, okay? Some cities to me are very nostalgic, but that's because of my journey through the game. Some of the cities that are nostalgic to you might not be that nostalgic to me and vice versa. That's how I came up with the list. Because it's actually a pretty big decision to make, and you'll notice that at the character creation screen, the game gives you a description of your race, it gives you a description of whatever class you want to choose, it even gives you a description of each deity, but it doesn't give you a description of the city that you can choose to start from. And some race class combinations have a choice of multiple cities to choose to start from. And we all probably know someone who quit the game pretty early on after starting because they just found it too difficult. And my question always is, was it actually that the game was too difficult or that the starting city they began the game in was just a poorly designed city or the developers didn't spend enough time on it and it made the beginning experience of this game too hard for them and they said, screw it, I'm done. I'm not going to waste my time on this game. It's too much. So we're going to go worst to best starting with... I'm sorry, Cabalos fans. I just, I have two questions and a comment for this city, okay? That sum up my whole issue with this city. Number one, what is the point of West Cabalus? Number two, what is with all the water? Number three, comment, don't act like you have four newbie zones when two of them are trash and you should never use them. Okay, let's talk about West Cabalus, my, my number one gripe. This city did not need to be two zones. There are some cities that it makes sense to split it up into two, maybe even three zones. This is not one of them, okay? Because West Cabalus has one guild in it, the Necro Guild. That's it. That's the only guild. I actually remembered the Warrior Guild being there, but as I made this character to run around, I realized, oh no, the Warrior Guild's actually in East Cabalus. There is no need for the Necro Guild to be in its own zone. And you have the Arena, which is the worst arena in the game. Granted, arenas are not that important. They're a nice bonus to have. It is the worst arena in the game because how are you supposed to fight other players with all these statues in the way? It's this little patch of grass with a bunch of statues. It's horrible. The Necro Guild could easily fit into this part of East Cabalus, or we, I guess at that point it would just be called Cabalus. This giant patch of water. We don't need this giant patch of water, okay? You could fit the Necro Guild right there. You could even fit the, the crappy little arena somewhere around here. It all could have fit in East Capitalis. It could have just been called Capitalis. The other reason I thought maybe they split it up into two zones because of this was that maybe there was something with the technology where they couldn't have four zones spreading off of one zone. But then I realized, well, what about Firat? Firat has like five zones off of it, right? It's got Agok, Plain of Fear, Wrath Mountains, Enothal Swamp, Kazakh Duel. Yeah, it's got a bunch. Okay. There's no reason why this had to be two zones. I don't understand it. I think they just wanted to make it feel bigger, which I get, but that's a crappy way to do it. It could have been one zone. The water. I get it that Ixars are, they like the water. They like swimming. They have a 100 swim skill. They're the only race that starts with a 100 swim skill, which is really cool. I like that. And I get that maybe some Ixars enjoy navigating through these little canals to get from place to place. But we don't need this giant pit of water right in the middle of the city. It's a waste of space. It's just useless space. I hate useless space. This zone has a lot of useless space. These zones, I should say. Oh my god, West Cabalus is awful. Here's another thing. Let's say you're starting the game as an Ixar Necro. God bless you. That's your guild, right? That big tower right there, that's your guild. That's where your guild master is. That's where you turn in your, your note, get your little pink robe. That's where you start your quests. Guess what you won't find in your Necro guild? Your spells, okay? Like the most important part of being a Necro is the spells that you get to cast. 
You're not going to get to cast any spells that you get from this guild because your spells aren't in this guild. Where are your spells, you might think? Are they right outside the guild? Are they in one of the little shops that you can see from the tower, the Necro Tower Guild? No, 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 no. They're all the way down here, past this canal, down here to the left. And now you got to navigate because you can't go on the right side because it's blocked off by some rocks. And even on the left side, it's a little tricky, especially for a new player to navigate this. This is where your spells are sold. Why? What is the point of that? What, are we just purposely trying to make things hard? Like, oh, Ixar start with higher AC and regen. Let's make things really hard for them. What is the point of this? This is so stupid. Okay, speaking of stupid, name any other city in this game that you can start in where you can just be wandering around your own city and you get attacked by frog locks that are yellow to you. Why? Why put these in here? And you might think, oh, well, you know, it's a dangerous city. You know, I get the whole lore aspect of Kabbalist is falling apart. Maybe that's why there's so much water. They're trying to rejuvenate their empire that's been destroyed by the Trakanon. And before that, it was the Shisar and the dragons and blah, blah, blah. I get it. I get the lore aspect of why Kabbalist is a piece of trash. But you might think, oh, I'm getting attacked by these frog blocks. Hey, I know. I'll just run to the guards. Oh, no, no, no. The guards aren't going to help you. No one is going to help you except for other players. I, I, it's just, it's stupid. There are multiple places in this zone where you can get attacked by frogs that the guards won't help you, and you just die. You just die. Like, oh, sorry, you ran into the frog lock part, which changes because there's there's two places. Anyway, let's talk about the newbie zones. I think that this was marketed as, hey, let's give four really different newbie zones. Okay, let's talk about Worsic Woods. Worsic Woods is a great zone if you're level 20 plus. It's a great zone. I love the giant fort. It's fantastic. This is really dumb that there are these trees that just take up like from the floor like they they clip into the ground okay and it makes it hard to see what's behind that tree could it be a mob could it be a cliff there's all these sudden cliffs cliff isn't really the right word but like sudden altitude drops where you can take a lot of fall damage this is a really stupid part of this zone that you can just be in the newbie area where there's level one skeletons and level two scale wolf pups or whatever and all of a sudden, the level 24 Goblin Shaman is just standing right there, just chilling, like right in the newbie area. It's a horrible newbie zone. Swamp of No Hope. This is this might be the most useless zone in the game, not just for newbies, but for anything. And I did the Ixar Illusion Quest as an enchanter. It's horrible. It's horrible. I actually like the Frog Lock City in the middle, but let's talk about it as a newbie zone for Ixars. There is so much water that even with your 100 swim skill, when you're chasing a low hit point mob that's running away from you, you're not going to be able to outswim them because they literally have double the swim skill you do at 100. They have 200. And you're going to run into this stupid cycle where they run away, then they gain health because you can't catch up to them, so you're not hitting them. Then they come back at you, then they get low health again, then they run away, and it's just this dumb cycle. And this zone has the same problem that Warsuk Woods has, which is there's random level 20 mobs just scattered around the level 1 mobs that you're going to run into, and you're going to die. And when you die, the zone, uh, this is a good thing that it does. The game is going to tell you, it's going to put you in Field of Bone, which is the good newbie zone. This is a legitimate newbie zone. It's like the game is telling you, hey, don't use that crappy one. Use this one that we're, we're binding you in. Lake of Illumin is okay. It's It's got a little bit of the problem with higher level mobs, except they're like level four, five, six mobs. So they're not as bad. I actually do like Lake of Illumin as a newbie zone up to about level eight or nine, because you do find some of those higher level mobs, like level five or six. It, it's light and spread out. It's easier to see them coming. It's not as good to Field of Bone, though. Field of Bone is a fantastic newbie zone. I'll give this city that. But but why give these other three that two of them are crap and one of them is okay? The guilds... I actually do like the guilds for the most part in this, in this city. I, I don't like the whole necro spells being way apart from the guild. But I do like the way the monk guild looks. I like the way the shaman guild looks. The warrior guild is actually pretty cool. There are some good quests in this zone. I will give them that. They put some good quests in this city. But overall, I mean, the thing that annoys me the most is that you had all the experience from the, the original game, all 13 or whatever cities to, to learn from and figure out what works, what doesn't. And this is somehow, in my view, the worst city in the game. Oh, Grob. Okay, before I go too hard on the city, I just want to say, I get it. I get the roleplay thing. Trolls are simple, stupid creatures that just want to kill and eat how endearing okay i get it so this zone does a good job of reflecting that but it is so not new player friendly for a number of reasons first of all 
I somehow find myself getting lost in this zone, despite how small it is. I mean, this is one of the smallest cities in the game. And honestly, it feels like the developers didn't spend a ton of time <laughs> dedicated to this city, but hey. I really don't like how, how simple the Warriors Guild is. Now, I actually do like the Shaman Guild and the Shadow Knight Guild, but the Warriors Guild is this pathetic little hill. It's a guy on a hill. Like, that's your guild master. It's that guy on a hill. That's all it is. It's like a little hallway with a couple guys on a hill. And it's got a sign, but there's no roof. There's no props. It's like, the they're the bashers, right? Like, the bashers are supposed to be pretty important to Grob. They're the guards. Like, there's some cities where the guards and the Warriors Guild are kind of two separate entities. And then there's some cities where the Warriors Guild kind of contributes to the guard populace. This is one of those. Like, in a Nothil Swamp, those trolls that you see patrolling, they are debashers, just like in Wrath Mountains. And so for the Warriors Guild to be such a throwaway little weird hallway outside, I don't know if hallway is the right word if it's outside, it's just pathetic. And I've done a bunch of the quests. I had a troll warrior that I brought up to about level 40. The quests are garbage, okay? I like this area. To me, this is very roleplay-ish. All the carving and you know, it's kind of gross, but whatever, it fits the troll thing. I hate the little streams. Stream is probably too strong a word. It's really glorified puddles that are very easy to get stuck in, especially if you're a new player. The worst part about this city is the newbie zone, okay? I talked about how Ixars, at least if they go to no Swamp of No Hope, first of all, don't go to Swamp of No Hope, but if you do, at least you have 100 swimming skill. Trolls don't have that. They start with zero swimming skill, just like every other race besides Ixar. You're going to be in this stupid cycle like I was on every troll I've played where you get a mob low on health, they run away, you can't outswim them, so they're going to get way far away from you. They gain health, they run back at you, you hit them again, they run away again. It's this stupid cycle that you get stuck in over and over. I hate it. I have this theory that they purposely made the game harder on trolls and Ixars because of the regen. Like that is such a great benefit that they were like, well, screw the troll players. I just think it sucks for new players. I will say, if you stick around in Nothal Swamp long enough to, to be about level six or seven, Upper Guck is a fantastic newbie zone. And I, by newbie zone, I mean like newbie dungeon. So let's say you and some ogres are in the early parts of Upper Guck. Granted, it's gonna be Train City. Yeah, it's a great little newbie zone. Like you'll get some really good experience. It's a great modifier there. I also think putting shadowed men in a Nothal Swamp is kind of a dick move. Those weird little pilgrims, I think they're called, with like the high level high elves and barbarians that just walk around killing trolls. It's, it's a horrible newbie zone. But otherwise, I would say if you're a brand new troll to the game, figure out a way to get to Neriak because that's a way better newbie experience. I don't like this zone. I got two main problems with this zone. One big problem, one medium-sized problem. One troll-sized problem, one Eurydice-sized problem. By the way, this is the end of the first tier of the cities. I ranked all the cities into tiers. Did I talk? I don't think I mentioned that in my intro. I put all these cities into tiers. This first tier I called, consult my little book here. This tier is called, I'm so creative. It's called bad. These are bad cities. This is the end of the first tier, the bad tier. Okay. My biggest issue with this zone, especially for a new player, is this whole key thing is impossible to figure out if you're new to the game. It is impossible. It is impossible to figure out your way out of the bottom part of Payneal because you need a key that you do not start with. I don't understand why the developers didn't just start you with the key, but whatever, they made this choice. I, it almost feels like this city was designed for advanced players. I know this city came out after the game came out, so it came out like I think before Kunark, but after the original game. It's like it's designed for advanced players. I had to, on this little character I created just to run around Payneal, I had to wait over 20 minutes for the NPCs to spawn because players were killing the guards. Like, not just, oh, I killed a guard, like they're camping the guards. They were killing the guards that give you the key in the bottom part of Payneal. How is a new player supposed to navigate that? That is just a nightmare. I mean, what's going to happen is you're eventually going to get frustrated. You're going to die. You don't really know how to talk to other players. Like, you don't know what out of character is when you start the game. You're going to die, and then you're not going to know how to get back down to Payneal because you're going to start in the upper part of Payneal once you die. It's just a stupid gimmick. It, to me, this whole thing, like this city would be ranked higher on my list 
if they had just started you with the key. In order to get the key, you have to say keys to four specific guards. Keys with a Z, okay? How would a new player know that? There's nothing telling you that you have to do that. It's ridiculous and I, I can't even imagine what it would have been like for someone who started the game as a Uridite Necro after Paniel launched. The second thing, the Uridite sized issue that I have with this city. The whole, I get it, it's a cool gimmick. I am a defender of how hard this game is, okay? People say this game is too hard, I defend it every time, the, except for this time. Let's say that you're brand new to the game, you somehow figure out the key bullshit, you get yourself to level five or six, and you're coming back from Nectalus Forest and you're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm looking in my inventory, I've got auto run on, gotta get my key ready so I can go back down to the city and sell. And you accidentally run off the side into the hole. You're never getting your corpse back. Your level six corpse is gonna rot down there. No high level player is gonna drag your corpse to the entrance of the hole and get you into the hole and prevent you from drowning while you're trying to get down there. Like that's just not gonna happen. You've lost your corpse. And for a brand new player, I know it sounds like, oh, level six, what's the big deal? When you're new to the game, level six takes like a couple days to get to at least. Level six is a big deal. Everything you have on you, your, your one backpack, your raw silk robe, that's like a big deal to you. And you're gonna lose all of that. That would frustrate the hell out of me as a brand new player to the point that I'd probably just quit. And the developers should not be in the business of making new players quit before they even get to the end of their free trial. You're supposed to get them to that point where they gotta pay nine bucks a month or whatever it was. I just hate this this city. I, If you put those two things aside, like why couldn't they have just put a little fence where you have to jump over it to go, I mean, that that's even lore-wise, that makes sense, right? Like, the Uridites don't want a giant hole there that someone could just fall down. They would put a little fence up. I get the whole, I get why the hole is there lore-wise. Put a little fence up, a little three foot tall fence that you have to at least jump to accidentally fall down. I guess it wouldn't be an accident at that point. Yeah, I also, I, I feel like the city is kind of confusing, but it also fits lore-wise. It's just like the portals are a little confusing. Like you go through a portal, wait, where am I? Am I in this part of the city? It definitely takes a while to familiarize yourself with the city. Actually, the city is kind of a weird preview of the whole dungeon, the whole, once you get down there, it kind of looks like this. Also, I like Nectalus. I, I kind of wish they hadn't done the newbie area because I think Nectalus Forest should have been the newbie area for both Uridites the ones that start in Arudin and Paniel. I also think once you get past a certain level, like, and I'm, we're assuming the Warrens doesn't, don't exist. Once you get past like level eight or nine, where do you go? You have to take the boat to Quenos. And you're gonna die on that trip because you're gonna be KOS in Arudin and you're gonna be KOS in uh, Quenos, unless you are a Necro and you can invis yourself, which maybe there's a good chance. I think there's only two classes that can start here, right? Yeah, it's Shadow Knights and Necros, okay. So there's a 50-50 chance. I mean, if you started as a Uridite Shadow Knight, I, I feel really bad for you for more reasons than just starting in this piece of trash city that, ooh, I, I almost want to say this is worse than Grob, but, but clearly I didn't. Okay, we're at the end of the tier, the bad tier. Let's move on to the next tier. This is a new tier. Don't get mad at me, Riverbell fans. I'm not saying this isn't the bad tier, okay? This isn't a new tier. This is the tier that I called the fine tier. It's just fine. They're not, there's three of these cities in the fine tier. They're not great. They're not terrible. They're just, they're fine, you know? What do I like about this city? Uh, the music is fitting, I think, for the Halfling race. I mean, I, I, I don't have a lot to say about this city. It's just okay. I don't like that it's right on the border with Kithiker Forest. I think that Kithiker Forest kind of presents itself to new players as a newbie zone. And you're in there and you're killing your level one Bixies and everything's so spread out. And you're like, hey, this is a nice little newbie zone. And then all of a sudden it turns into demons from hell at 8 p.m. I think that's a little um, rough, but Misty Thicket, fantastic newbie zone. Might be one of the best newbie zones in the game because, well, there's a bunch of reasons, but the thing I really like is there's a divider, a natural divider in the zone that basically separates the very low level, like level one, two, three mobs from the level four through 10 mobs. And guards are on that dividing line. So it makes it easier to run to them if you're in the higher level part of the zone. I really like that. I find the, you know, it's it's like Lord of the Rings or whatever, the halflings, the gubbins, and the, I don't even know what to call them. I like that it has a mare. That's 
cute. It's fitting. I just, I'm just fine with this zone. I really don't have a ton to say. It's, it's fine. The guild, like, I like that the, the warrior guild is, is in the, the guard or the mayor tower. I like that the rogue guild is in a bar. The druid guild is like this weird little farm. Uh, that's kind of weird to me. Cleric guild is nice. It's like a scaled down, tinier version of the dwarf cleric guild. And even, honestly, even smaller than the gnome cleric guild. The good one. Uh, you know, I, it's fine. Next. It's hard for me to not compare the trolls to the ogres because they're so similar in a lot of ways. This to me is a much better version of Grob. It's not like a version of Grob, but it's like kind of what I wish Grob was like in terms of quality. It's so fitting. They do this whole like Fred Flintstone caveman kind of vibe with the shops and I, I like that. I don't really understand the tunneling. Part of the zone is within these tunnels. That's like kind of a dwarf thing to me, but and you're going to find a lot of people hunting this zone, like level 40s druids. It, you just got to get used to it. You know, best case scenario, you get a sew out of it. This, it, everything feels fitting. The warrior guild is like a substantial, like, you can tell ogres are really proud to be warriors. The shadow knight guild is surprisingly advanced for the, I guess you'd call it the low intellect of the ogres. It's like a really legit looking guild. The shaman guild's a little weird. It's in that whole tunnel system that I talked about. The Firat is not my favorite newbie zone, but it's better than a Nothul. Once again, I just, I compare the trolls and the ogres. Uh, it's okay. I mean, it, it's a little dangerous, especially with that high level human rogue that walks around. The whole lizard thing, like you're not going to Kazakh Duel until you're level 25-ish. I don't know why it's right there. It's certainly not a newbie zone, newbie zone for ogres. It's, it's hard to see in the Theorot. I don't really know where you go after like level five or six. I guess you go to the Desert of Row. I mean, I, I just don't, I, I don't really like how it's all laid out. I guess to my earlier point, Upper Guck is a good option. So there's that. There's some decent quests in Agak. This is in the fine tier and it shows. I mean, <laughs> I like it a little bit better than Rivervale. I think it's a really cool, like lore wise, it's a really cool and fitting ogre place. I could see ogres living here. I learned from running around as this level one character that the Ogre Guild, the Ogre Warrior Guild, is it's indoors. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was indoors, but yeah, Agak is fine. If you're new to the game and you start here, I think you'll have a fine time. It's it's really not holding you back the way that a Grob or a Cavalus or a Paniel to some extent is. Oh, my dear Akanon, you might be a little surprised that this is where it is on this list because of my walkthrough, but... I'm actually not the biggest fan of Akanon. It's fine. It's at the end of, this is the last city in the fine tier. I, I think if you're new to the game, this is a good, somewhere between fine and good starting location. It's really dark. It's all underground. It's kind of depressing. I get the underground thing because of Brel Cyrillus, but it is, I mean, Kaladin's underground and it doesn't feel this depressing. There's something about the darkness in the zone that just kind of bums me out. It's got the water thing that reminds me of Kabbalus a little bit. I know this came before Kabbalus. There's a lot of useless, just giant water parts of this zone that I don't really see the point of other than making it feel artificially big. I kind of like that unlike some of the later cities that we'll see, the evil guild is not doomed to this hiding underground thing. It's kind of like, just go to the back. You know, you guys are evil, just go to the back of the zone. We're not gonna, you don't need to hide, just go to the back, stay away from us. You're way back there. It's inconvenient. That's what you get for being evil. <laughs> and that little area with the evil guilds, it's kind of annoyingly like maze-like to, I, I can never memorize that area down there. I still get lost. Plenty of guilds, both good and evil. I actually really like the good cleric guild. I kind of regret not being Brawl Surrealist on uh, chains, just because I like this guild. I think it's really cool. The Abbey of Deep Musing. The Intel Guild, it's okay. I, it's it's kind of all jammed together, which a lot of the Intel Caster Guilds are in this in this game, regardless of what city they're in. The Warrior Guild, it feels like an afterthought. Like they made the zone and they were like, oh, we forgot to we forgot gnomes could be war. Yeah, let's add a little dinky little Warrior Guild real quick. I would put it up there with Grob as the most pathetic Warrior Guild. In fact, it might even be worse than the Grob Warrior Guild. It's just like this little room to the side of when you're running through from the entrance. To the shop area. Kind of a throwaway warrior guild, but I guess not a lot of people were going to be no warriors anyway, so who cares? Steamfront Mountains I like. I really like how it kind of separates between the pit area, which is like the level one, two, three area, 
Then you do have the cobalt camps right near it, which is cool because that's like for four, five, six, seven. And then you've got the windmill area and even the dead dragon area for levels eight, nine plus. And then you've got the whole cave with the minotaurs. Like I, I think the progression in Steampunk Mountains is ideal. It really is separated. I like Steampunk quite a bit. And you've got a bunch of places you can branch out to as a new player. I think this is a fantastic choice. You can go to, you know, you're not that far from Kaladin, the boats, how to get to Antonica. You've also got all the dungeons. You've got Crushbone, you've got Mistmore, you've got Unrest. Lots of options, lots of other cities that are friendly that you can go to. You can go to Kaladin, you can go to Felwith, you can go to Kelethin. It's good. I really like this. As a, Like, if you're a new player and you're starting in Akanon, you're going to be just fine. Speaking of Kelethin, what a great transition. And we're transitioning into a new tier. The tier that I call good, with an exclamation mark. It's good. I like these ends. In fact, I'm going to like every city from here on out, because now we're in the good zone. Speaking of zone, there's something unique about this city. It is the only city in the game, the starting city that players can start in, that is not in its own zone. There's no zone called Kelethin. You're in Greater Fadark, which I really like. There's so much good to say about this city. Uh, let me just start with this. I have a soft spot for this city because I played on the Tuner server back in the day. I've talked about this before. It's one of the few servers that had Kelethin as its auction zone. Instead of East Commons, we use Kelethin. I know for a lot of players that's weird, but that made it so that every player in the game was very used to Kelethin. We all had Kelethin faction. Even with being used to Kelethin, and we definitely all knew where the bank was, there are some downsides to the zone, but they're minor. They're, they're little nitpicks. I mean, I really have to, from here on out, if I'm complaining, I'm nitpicking because this is a fantastic city. Nitpicks, obviously it's really easy for a new player or any player really, especially if you've been drinking alcohol in the game, to fall off the side, especially of these bridges. It's not a big deal though, because you fall, you die. All you gotta do is just run around underneath the city to get your corpse. It's not, there's nothing dangerous down there. It's not like Paneel, where if you fall off the side of the, city, you've, your corpse is just damned to eternal damnation. <laughs> damned to eternal damnation. You know, it's not a big deal if you fall down. And the other knock, the city kind of all looks the same. I mean, you could pick any two random parts of Kelethin and it all kind of looks the same. It takes a long time to memorize this city because other than the signs on some of the buildings looking different, oof, there's not a whole lot separating different parts of the city. The music is iconic. This might be the most memorable song from the original EverQuest, I think. I mean, it's it's up there. Roleplay wise, it's so cool. I mean, you're up in the city to do your questing and your guild master training, your banking, your merchant selling, and then you descend down into the forest to level up an XP and kill mobs. It's so cool. I mean, how can you not love this city? It, it is a little polarizing because of the two things I complained about, but for the most part, if you started the game in this city, I'm actually kind of jealous because this this is like would have me in awe. If I was 1999 and I logged in this game for the first time, I would be in awe because this is so beautiful looking. I mean, you're up in the trees. You can look down at the forest. It's so cool. Love this city. This is probably one of the least popular cities on this list. I actually think it's a little underrated, probably because it's on Otis, which is a totally fair critique. People don't like Otis, but we're not here to talk about Otis. We're talking about Arudin. I like Arudin a lot, and it actually has a lot in common with the next city we're gonna talk about, but I'll wait till I get there. Just a little teaser for you. It's a small city. It starts you out, most characters, on this little dock thing, which is weird because it doesn't really look like the rest of the city. It's, it's, almost, like a, it's almost like the city fakes you out. When you finally get to the main area, it's another two-zone city, which I actually find a little annoying in this case. I don't think it needs to be two zones, mainly because this part is small. It just, it feels like the two zones are, too, are so small. Why not just put them together? I like how sort of formal and prim and proper grandiose a lot of the city is. You got these like marble floors pattern, checkerboard pattern. It's clearly carved into some sort of mountain. It was in the little intro video as like this big city on a mountain. Everything about the Uridites is just so clean and 
fancy and you know they're one of these races that thinks they're smarter than everyone else and then you get to the second zone which is the Arudin tower this is cool this is a cool concept it's a zone just for the intelligence casters which is the bulk of most Eurydite characters Eurydites have the highest starting intelligence of any race so a lot of the ink casters naturally as new players are going to gravitate toward oh why don't I be a Eurydite it's like I, I already have a head up on you know, spell casting, that's the most important thing for a caster. And I have the most mana. I like how the city, that part of the city divides into, here's the magician part, here's the wizard part, here's the enchanter part. I played in a Uridite enchanter, I really liked it. In the other part of the city, there's two paladin guilds, which I think is pretty cool. I guess two paladin and two clerics. And then we get to what I think is the most underrated part of Arudin, which is the under part of the Tower of Arudin. It's the bank. It's the jail. We have a jail. We do have jails in other cities, but this one is really kind of cool because kind of like the dock, it sort of doesn't fit with the rest of the city. You got this gnome character that claims he's locked up unjustly. I just think it's really cool. I think this, this tower looks so regal. I love the way the guards look, where they all have the stick instead of a sword or a dagger or anything like that. It just makes, it really captures the vibe of what I think of with Uridites. The downside to this city is it's on Otis, which kind of sucks. Tox Forest, eh, not the best newbie zone, not the worst. It's just that you naturally hit a stopping point when you level here. You get to like level eight and you gotta go. You just gotta go. Kara Isle is, ugh. Some people might call it an underrated newbie, like early teens kind of place to level. I never got into Kara Isle. I think you hit level eight as a Uridite and you go to Quenos. You go to Quenos Hills, you go to Blackborough, you go to the Karanas. That's a much better path. It's not that far away though. It's not that big a deal. Tox Forest just kind of sucks. Like it's really, really dark. You're blind as a Uridite, just like humans and barbarians. The other downside to the city is that no one's really here. I mean, you get the occasional person that's killing the guards. It's kind of empty, and that kind of sucks. There's really not a lot of players coming through here. There's a few quests that involve your rune, which is cool, but for the most part, players are just passing through. No one really hangs out here. There's. It's cool that the, the boat area says Trips to Velius, which I wonder if they planned out, hey, if this game ever gets really popular, we're going to do the Velius expansion, and we're going to have it leave from here. And then later on, they're like, eh, let's do North Row instead because no one really goes to Otis. <laughs> but I really like the city. I think it's a really cool starting city. If you start here, yes, you're gonna end up leaving pretty quickly, but I think it's a good place to start. Now this zone is very fancy. I think this zone purposely received a lot of TLC from the developers because they had a hunch that a lot of players were gonna pick high elves. As you go through this zone, pay attention to all the little details that they added. There's the ivy on the walls, the ivy on the buildings. There's the fact that the Paladin Guild is built into a giant tree, which really ties it in well with the Plane of Growth when that eventually comes out. The High Elves are the oldest and wisest of the races that you can choose to play from. And they exist to worship Tuner, and it really shows throughout Velveth. I like this zone for a lot of reasons. First, it's very regal looking. It's very bright, despite the fact that I filmed this footage during dusk time. This zone is very bright, and I think that's helpful for new players. I talked about how dark Akanon was, and obviously you're going to have issues with the, the races that don't even have Infravision, but you get a lot of the same benefits that we talked about with Kelethin. You get a really great newbie zone and Greater Fade Arc. You get the whole path that players have as they go up the levels for all of Fadewar. Greater Fade Arc, Crushbone, Unrest, Miss More, and then from there you can, can go wherever you want. You get all the other great towns on Fadewar. This is just a, a really good choice for a new player. Funny enough, I have never actually played a character that leveled in this because I've never played a High Elf. I've always disliked the way High Elves look, but I love the way this city looks. I, I really like it. There's good quests, great newbie zones, you're not gonna get lost, it's small. Now, this zone has something in common with Arudin. It actually has quite a bit in common. First of all, the Uridites and the High Elves, they're the two races that think they're smarter than everyone else. They're the two frailest races. So if you pick a Paladin for either of these races, oh boy, 
Not that it matters in the long run, but in the short run, you're going to be really weak and powerless. And, you know, the High Elves probably think that they're smarter than the Uridites. I, I feel like the two races don't even, lore-wise, they don't even really pay attention to each other. Intelligence casters, a little bit better for Uridites. Wisdom caster, a little bit better for High Elves. But they're both great for both. And they both have two zone cities with one zone being exclusively dedicated to the intelligence casters, which I think is really cool. They both utilize the whole portal system in their city. Like in Arudin, you can port from the dock to the city, port into the tower. In Felwith, you can port to the different intelligence casting guilds. I noticed that and I thought about that for the first time as I was doing this video, that the High Elves and the Uridites have a lot in common. Anyway, this zone is great. Music, it's nice and bright. I just think it's a great starting city for really anyone, as long as you can tolerate being a high elf, which I never could, but I really like visiting this city. All right, so we're in a new tier here. I called this tier, great, exclamation mark. It's great. This is a perfect example of a two zone city done well. Both zones feel useful to the city, okay? So in the first zone, which is South Caledon, you have the Warrior Guild, you have a bunch of merchants relating to the trade skills and things like that. And you have the infamous Orc Belt quest, which is also part of the Warrior Guild. You also have the King of Kaladin, which is really interesting because it's kind of a preview foreshadowing of Thurgoden, a couple expansions later, right? You have this outside castle. Within it, you have the king in a room that doesn't really have a throne. It's kind of just the king's room, surrounded by a bunch of high-level guards. And then behind that, you have where he sleeps. Now this is interesting because Thurgoden's kind of just a bigger version of this, and the king isn't naked. I wish they didn't use a naked king in Kaladin, but you know, whatever. We got a king. It's better than the king of Akanon, which is just a machine. You go down to North Kaladin, and it sounds weird to say down, but as you progress further into the, the zone, you actually get to North Kaladin, into the city. Here you have the Paladin Guild all the way in the back, you have the Cleric Guild, you have the Rogue Guild. You also have the Bank. Now the guilds are really interesting because the Paladin Guild being furthest in the back is almost like a sign that it's the most important. Like you have to go the furthest into Kaladin to get to the most important guild, where it's almost like the dwarves hold being a Paladin as sort of the ultimate actualization of being a dwarf. It's what all dwarves aspire to be. Maybe. I mean, maybe I'm reading too much into that, but it's kind of the opposite of what I said about Akanon, where they made the evils, the undesirables, go all the way to the back. But you do see the same thing in Neriak, where the most important guild, the Shadow Knights and the Necros, are way in the back of Neriak Third Gate. So I think that's kind of what's going on here. Cleric Guild is great. I love it. It's possibly my favorite Cleric Guild in the game. I really like it. It's like a bigger version of the Abbey of Deep Musing, a much bigger version of the Halfling one. And then you have the Rogue Guild, which most of the Rogue Guilds in this game are very subdued. This one is right by the mine, which I'll talk about in a second. It's like they're trying not to call too much attention to themselves, which makes sense from a roleplay perspective. It's basically just some rogues surrounding a fire outside the bank. It's close to the bank, which is another thing that Rogue Guilds sometimes have in this game. But there's no real grand, like, Rogue Guild building. There's really only two cities that do that, which would be Neriak, which has a really big Rogue Guild sort of underground building. And then Kelethin, which has just a regular looking hut in the city that's dedicated to rogues. So this is pretty standard rogue guild fare. The mine is interesting because it's kind of a lore tidbit, almost a gimmick. I don't mean gimmick in a bad way necessarily, but it's a lore thing that, you know, dwarves like mining underground. It's Brel Cyrillus. It's, it's all that lore stuff. I think this is a really good city for new players. You have the infamous bone chip quest all the way in the paladin guild in the back. And then for your leveling path, the newbie zone butcher block is great. It's big, it's spread out, a lot of stuff right outside the city. But as you go further out away from Kaladin, you start to encounter higher level mobs. And there are guard towers scattered throughout butcher block, which is really helpful for new players. You have all the same stuff as what I already talked about on Fadewar. And then you also have the boat right there, which can take you to Antonica, which is where a lot of your higher level stuff is gonna be done. But it's also where you can go do something different for your mid levels instead of miss more and unrest. This is probably my favorite city on Fedor. I guess based on this list, it is my favorite city on Fedor. Great city, really captured the whole dwarf thing really well, I think. Now we have a classic and our first three zone city. 
Freeport is probably the most memorable city in the game for most players who played back in the day. Mostly because of its proximity to East Commons, which was the auction zone for most servers, but this is just a really good desert city. That's a really unique thing about it. It's the only city in the game that feels like it's in a desert, and that's a good way for it to separate itself from Quenos, which is more of a grassy kind of area. So we've got three zones. I like all three. Starts out with West Freeport. You've got a couple guilds there. You've got the Arcane Sciences Academy, which is like just like a lot of the other Intel caster guilds. The Intel casters kind of segregate themselves away from people. You got your mages, your enchanters, your wizards, and it's a slew of different races, which is kind of the theme of Freeport. I did a whole video on Freeport talking about how it's like this metropolitan, every race is welcome, all that diversity kind of stuff. If you want to see that video, it's long. <laughs> it's probably the longest video on my channel, but I, I really tried to capture as much of that as I could. Uh, just everything about Freeport. You've got a bunch of inns here. You've got the Warrior Guild. You do have the whole underground thing. I don't think there's any guilds in West Freeport, but it leads to where you would be in East Freeport that has all the guilds. Okay, the evil guilds that are underground. There is some tunneling under North Freeport. There's tunneling under all the Freeports, which is really cool. You've also got the whole lore thing with the corrupt guards and Sir Lucan Delir. It ends up tying into a paladin quest, Soulfire. Of course, we can't forget all the music in West Freeport. Really all the Freeports, but the, the track right outside the gate at West Freeport is so memorable. I said earlier that though the Kelethon song is probably the most memorable in the game. If it's not that one, it's this one outside of West Freeport. You've also got the, the Monk Guild. Can't forget that. It's kind of a... The Monk Guilds in this game, there's only two... Well, there's three if you count Catalyst. They're, they're kind of subdued purposely because the monks are, you know, kind of quaint and supposed to be selfless and all that kind of stuff. And you also have this stage area where like it's performing arts to show how cultural Freeport is. Then you go to East Freeport and you have... Your first introduction to the slums, there was kind of a slum area in West Freeport where the wall is falling apart and you got the noose, but no one really lives there except for that one wood elf lady. East Freeport, you really have an introduction to the slums. You also have the port, which is a big part of East Freeport, and you have all that underground evil casters and classes. That's where their guild is. It's also a great way for players who come from other... If you took the boat and you're a, I don't know, a troll, and you want to just sneak through Freeport, and you don't want to run and get all the guards' attention, you can do that underground. You've got every trade school you can imagine across Freeport. You do have two leveling zones for new players. You've got East Freeport and West Freeport, which have their own built-in little newbie area. I suggest either, but I really do like East Freeport because it's less used. There's like a coyote or a wolf or something that goes up to level four, so you can stay there a little bit longer. And then I would actually recommend North Row over East Commons. You do have all the auction stuff in East Commons, which can be kind of annoying for a new player, kind of overwhelming actually, but there's also the potential for buffs, so you have that. But I really like, if you're just playing the game as like a standalone, like I'm not trying to get buff, I'm not trying to cheat, none of that stuff. I prefer the East Freeport path into North Row better than the West Freeport path into East Commons, but that's just me. And then you can go in any direction you want. I mean, you have so many leveling areas for Freeport. This is one of the best reasons why this city is up so high on my list. North Freeport is really interesting because it's like the good Freeport, the prim and proper, maybe a little too prim and proper, like they're a little too high and mighty, but the Cleric and the Paladin Guild is amazing. Now there are technically two, there's the one dedicated to Mar, and then there's the other one which is for other human and half of Paladins that start in Freeport, but they don't worship either of the Mar sisters or siblings. North Freeport also contains the bank, it's got some good quests, I, just quests throughout all of Freeport. This this is a zone, a city that you can tell they dedicated a lot of resources to. It's hard to beat as a starting area because you have so many resources you can use. So for new players, hard to go wrong with Freeport. Niriak and the end of this tier, end of the great tier. Only one more tier left after this, so we're getting close to the end here. All right, so Niriak is the second of our three zone cities, and it is fantastic. Freeport was the first three zone city, and then you have Niriak. Arguably, Quenos is a three zone city. Uh, arguably, a four zone city. We'll get there. We'll talk about it. I don't know how I feel about a sewage system being part of a city, but I'm open to the discussion. Okay. Let's start with Foreign Quarter. It's the first one you see when you come here. I really like this because. Here's just a quick distinction between Freeport and Niriak. In Freeport, I felt like the three zones were pretty similar. North Freeport a little bit more distinct, but East and West kind of felt like 
continuations of each other. Each of the three Niriaks feels very distinct to me, very unique. First of all, Foreign Quarter, it's like, if you're not a Dark Elf, this is your place to go. You can still come here. We've got humans, we've got half-elves, we've got ogres, trolls. They're all welcome here. But it really feels like the ogre and troll section, which I think a lot of people just run by on their way to Niriak Commons, the ogre troll section is really fleshed out. I have seen level one, not new players obviously, but I have seen low level trolls just run straight to Niriak and get a bind. Like level one, you know what? Not gonna deal with Grob, not gonna deal with Anothal Swamp. I'll just ride with Niriak and I don't blame them. Niriak foreign quarter, in addition to all the foreign stuff, it kind of feels like the zone where you've got the, the real bulk of the trade skill stuff. There's also some decent quests in here. I, just a quick lore thing on the troll ogre. So the trolls and the ogres have an alliance with the dark elves. It's basically like, hey, you can come to Niriak and in exchange, we're using you for something lore wise, which is a discussion for another time. But for, I don't know what dark elves really have to gain by being able to go to Grob, but hey, it's, it's good to have options. It's not to say that like a troll shadow knight worshiping a Nura couldn't go to third gate and go use the shadow knight guild. It just might not be regarded warmly by the shadow knight guild. So foreign quarter is great. Then you get Niriak Commons, also known as Niriak B. This is where you've got, I don't think there's any guilds. I think there are some troll ogre guild masters in foreign quarter. Commons, you've got the warrior guild. You've got the intelligence caster guild, which just like every other race that can be intelligence casters, they're segregated into their own little thing, which is cool. It's their own little tower, once again, enchanter, wizard, mage. And you've got the bank, which is great. You've got a little underground bar thing. There's a lot of trade school stuff here as well. In fact, I think there's just as much trade school stuff, if not more than foreign quarter. Very trade school friendly city in general. You've got a ton of quests. I mean, you see the lore throughout. You see the homages to Anuric, their god, a lot, but you especially see it in third gate. And let's just talk about third gate. It's the creepiest city zone in the game, in my opinion. I really find it <laughs> almost disturbing. And the music is fantastic. The music really draws you in. It's there in the commons. It's there in the foreign quarter a little bit. It really gets you in the third gate. You start out with the Cleric Guild, which is its own little tower thing, but that's not as deep as it goes. And this is kind of like I said about Kaladim. The most important classes have their guild way in the back of Third Gate, which takes forever to get to. There is debatably a link to the Plane of Hate here. I don't think that that portal ever worked. It's that little locked thing. I don't know. There was a lot of discussion about why it was there, but I like the idea of that even if it was just a player myth or an idea that was never actually implemented. You've also got the Rogue Guild. This is one of the only Rogue Guilds that has its own dedicated, like, we are the Rogues. I guess because they're Dark Elves, they're already evil, so they don't care if anyone knows that they're Rogues. You've got the statue and the dragon outside of it. It's really weird. You've got the library in Third Gate with the infamous Red Wine quest. And then you see something that you won't see anywhere else. You've got ghouls that aren't KOS, assuming you're a Dark Elf. Or a troll that follows an Eric. I don't know about ogres. I don't know. Or if you're a troll that follows Kazakh, I have, I've never done that experiment. You've got ghouls guarding the, the Necro and the Shadow Knight Guild. It is really cool. And you do see one troll in Third Gate, but it's an anomaly. The music is just so creepy. Like, it really pulls you in. I have often thought that just going into this game blind... I kind of feel like Dark Elves are the best race to play. You get Ultra Vision, you get this super cool city, you get a wide range of classes you can be. You can be pretty much any class except for Monk and Shaman. Oh, and Bards. And Paladin, obviously. It's just really cool. I, I love Dark Elves, I love the way they look. Third Gate, once you get to that section past the ghouls with the, the big red pyramid looking thing, which is the Shadow Knight Necro Guild, it's so creepy. And the funny thing is you have this little halflings swimming around here spying on <laughs> the dark elves because the halflings and the dark elves are at war with each other and you get the progression is fantastic you know you have lava storm mountains right there with soul a and soul b so really between najana soul a soul b and the outside part of lava storm nectalus you could get to level 50 without even going anywhere else you could just literally start in niriak and nectalus forest get to level 50 in soul b and everything in between is covered. You're not gonna do that most likely, but it's cool to have those options. I really love this zone. I feel like they put a ton of care into it. What can I say? Third gate, third favorite city. 
All right, we're officially in the last tier, and this tier is called, this is actually kind of a pun, Best of the Best, B-O-T-B. It only contains two cities. If you don't remember what Best of the Best is, it was a player competition run by GMs for each class in the arena, where they would duel each other tournament style until you got the best of the best. So the best paladin, the best cleric, whatever. This is in the best of the best category because it's one of the best. In fact, I struggled a little bit with two and one, but not too much. Now we know Quenos Hills is the very first zone that was designed, right? I don't know if that means Quenos was the first city that was designed, but I think it is. The city has a very, they had to make Freeport and Quenos look different, right? One's a desert, one is not a desert. This is your more traditional looking temperate, deciduous forest kind of, you know, ivy on the walls, old school looking city, stone walls, which you do have stone walls in Freeport, but not like this and not with ivy on them. You've got the giant clock tower. Okay, so we've got two zones with a sewage system that is its own separate zone. You start out in North Quenos and immediately two things that you'll see are two characters that yell and out of care or shout, whatever. They're NPCs but it pulls you in. It makes you feel like you're in a living city, which is kind of tragic because it ended up being one of the lesser populated cities in the game, strictly because of where it is and the fact that there are no ports nearby, which sucks. Can you just imagine though, if on some random server, I don't know, just pick one, like the Karana server, Quenos was the auction zone somehow, that would've been cool, or Quenos Hills or something like that. So you start out in the north and you get these two characters yelling out. One of them is a Knoll, which is kind of foreshadowing that if you're gonna level here, you're probably gonna end up in Blackborough fighting Knolls. And the Knolls and the humans are at war with each other. The Knolls are claiming the humans are on stolen land. And then you've also got this person telling you to come to the Temple of Life and this, the Rod Set Knife and all this stuff. This NPC shouting serves as a great introduction to this war that seems to be going on, civil war within this city, between the forces that claim to be good and the forces that are evil and live in the sewers. And generally just the corruption among the guards. Cleric, Paladin Guild, right there. Looks like a UFO, we all know it. We've all probably been here for at least a sign of Maga quest. Other than the UFO looking thing, once you actually go inside that weird looking spaceship, it feels very cleric-y and paladin -y, which is really cool. You've also got the Rogue Guild in this zone hidden behind a bar. The bars and the houses in this city, they just feel more organic than Freeport. Freeport felt like it had a lot of shops, but there were no buildings where people would actually live. Quenos feels like people actually live here. There's a lot of empty houses that are just for people living, like the little Joshua character. North Quenos is a great intro, and then you get to South Quenos, and it's a very different, I mean, it's kind of a continuation, but you have some more, uh, this feels like more of like, if Quenos was going to be one zone, it would be this one. You've got the bank. You've got the Intel Caster Guild, which is just like all the others, segregated. You've got the Warrior Guild, which is tied into the arena. Nolfang Quest, one of the most exploited quests in the game. You've got a bunch of different entrances to the sewer, and that's true in both of the Quenos zones. And you've got what I think is the best dock in the game, the most natural feeling dock in the game. I think that the whole fish hanging out and the mermaids in and all the seafood kind of stuff, it feels real, like this would be a real dock. And you've got two docks, the boat only comes to one, and it instills this sense of adventure in the players. Like, oh my gosh, I started in the city, but there's a dock with a boat that comes, and maybe I could go wherever that goes, not knowing that Otis kind of sucks. And then there's a little in-between island that you can stop at in the sea. Now let's talk about the sewers. The sewers are really interesting because there's a lot of classes down there. And one of the best ways to get down there, I started this little Shadow Knight to run around, the, the little note actually told me to go into the Warrior Guild, follow the Trail of Bones, which leads to a invisible wall that you can run through. That's your way into the sewers. There's other ways to get in. There's one from the dock. There's one out in front of Gwynos Hills near there. Get down there and it's all Bertoxilus-y. It's not like the Freeport sewers where there's a bunch of other races down there. It's pretty much just humans down there, but they're very into Bertoxilus. It feels very evil actually kind of reminds me of the ghoul part of Niriak a little bit because you've got these specters down there that are not KOS. And there's this whole section that isn't even about the guilds or Bertoxus. It's just like places that you can level. And my very first character was a barbarian shaman who actually got lost down there, died at level five or six, never got my corpse back. 
But it, it feels like evil down there. It feels eerie. Even if you go into one of the areas that's not by the guild section, you go down there and you're like, whoa, something feels off down here. Something feels creepy. Really pulls you in. Let's talk about the journey that you can have from starting in Quenos or really anywhere in Western Antonica. I think it's the best. I know I just said that Dark Elves would be like the race that I would choose to start for any brand new player. If I could choose anywhere to start in 1999 with no maps online or anything like that, it would be Western Antonica because the journey is incredible. You go to Blackborough, you can go to Everfrost, you can go to Permafrost. You could, if you wanted to, go from level one through 50 just in those few zones. But there's part of you that won't let you do that because you know, you've been to West Karana, you've poked your head in there, you've seen, whoa, this zone's really big. What's on the other side of it? I don't know. Because if you start in Freeport or Kaladim or anything like that, your exploration, there's not a lot of skin in the game. Like if I start in Felwith and I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to go see what's on the other side of Lesser Fadark, that's like 10 minutes away. You know, there's there's no real danger. Oh, I died in Lesser Fadark. Oh, I died in Akanon. That's like 10 minutes away. You're fine. When you run through West Karana, you realize, oh my gosh, like if I get, I don't even know what's on the other side of this giant zone. There's hill giants. There's a couple guard towers. It's scary. But whatever is on the other side of this zone, I don't know that I have a real quick journey back. Like we're talking maybe a 45 minute corpse run if I die in East Karana or High Pass or I, I find out Split Paws out there. Like there's so much adventurous feeling to that barrier that was West Karana. It's the same thing that makes it such a pain in the ass to get to Quenos. But if you start as a new character, and you're done exploring Blackboro, and you're like, I kind of want to try this Western Karana. I feel like there's something big out there. That's the coolest feeling. One of the coolest feelings in the game for a starting character is knowing that you're taking a leap of faith by running across West Karana and not knowing what's on the other side, and knowing that you have a hell of a course run ahead of you if you die out there. You don't get that feeling anywhere else. If this was the first design city, it was incredibly ambitious, but I think they nailed it. I love the city. It's my second favorite in the game. Last one in the BOTB tier, last city in this whole countdown, it's Halas for me. I have to admit, I am biased, okay? To say that this is my favorite city in the game, I, I am biased. Here's why I'm biased. Number one, give me the snow level in any game and I will, it's my favorite. Metal Gear Solid, Zelda, Final Fantasy, whatever it is, I love the snow levels. Mario 64, I love them all. Number two, my very first character that I ever leveled past level one or two, was a barbarian shaman. And I got so sucked into the aesthetic of the city. I probably walked around for about 90 minutes just looking at stuff, clicking on stuff. You've got all these torches being used as a source of light, but also probably a source of warmth because it's cold, there's snow everywhere. And the music is just perfectly dropped in certain spots to really capture that whole kind of Scottish theme that they're going for with all this, the kilt, all the shops that sell the different armors, the guards wearing the bear heads on top of their heads. Everything is just perfect about this zone. And let's say you're new to the game and this is where you start. First of all, a lot of the stuff that I said about Quenos applies here with the journey, you know, the Karanas, all that stuff. Blackboro, same thing. But you have a much more difficult path as a barbarian than a human starting Quenos. It's not one of those areas where you feel like you have this ridiculous handicap put on you. It's hard just for the sake of being hard, which I feel like Inothal kind of fits that, Kabbalist to some extent. It's not like that. But it's also not handing you the game on a silver platter. Oh, here's a bunch of high-level players passing through that can give you buffs because you're right near the auction zone. Oh, here's a ton of different uh, newbie zones for you to look at. No, you get one. You get Everfrost Peaks. You can go to Blackboro if you can figure out how to get there, which for a new player, you're going to need another player to show you how to get there most likely. That's what happened to me. And it built that bond that I had with some players that I never really forgot. And they were players that I kept in touch with throughout my time playing the game. And then if you go the other way, while you do have the guard stationed right before you get to the kind of plains part of the Everfrost Peaks, it's dangerous out there. Once you get out there, you got Tundra Jack and that's it. And Tundra Jack's probably not helping you. You've got Ice Giants. What other starting area has giants right nearby? I guess you could argue Freeport. You could have some North Row Sand Giants. You've got bears running around, like polar bears, big polar bears. You've got goblins. You've got gnolls. You've got all this cool stuff. You've got these vengeful lyricists. You've got a frozen river that has a necromancer, an undead necromancer walking around underneath it. It's just so cool. Like everything about it is so 
acceptably difficult is how I feel the Barbarian Path is. Halas, it's not, it's a no frill city, you know, it's one zone. It doesn't need to be any more than one zone. It's circular, so you're not going to get lost super easily. Everything is just so perfectly captured roleplay-wise. You've got that big ramp tunnel that you come down to get out of Halas into Everfrost Peaks. I, I just can't imagine a better starting place than this zone to me. Halas just nailed it. And Everfrost is the accompanying zone. I think it's the best. So that's my list. I started out telling you there's some subjectivity here, clearly. But I'm curious to see what other people would say is, you don't have to give me your whole list, but what would you say is the worst city for a starting player? And what would you say is the best? Now, I can already hear some of you yelling at your screen saying, oh my God, Sage Frank, what a dummy. You totally forgot one city. Yes, I know, Surefall Glade. I had a hard time considering this one a city, okay? If I had to consider it a city and I had to stick it in here, let me check my little notes here. I'd probably put it in somewhere between eh, Agak and Akanon maybe, or maybe Akanon and Kelthan, somewhere in there, somewhere in between the fine and the good tier. I just think it looks great, but really it's not a full-fledged city. Now, character select screen would back me up and say it's not a city because if you do start in Quain if you do start in Shurfall Glade, it'll say Quainos on the thing. You're right there, you're right next to Quainos. I mean, <laughs> it's as a city, it's very small. This is one of the reasons why I said you could consider Quainos a four-zone city because you've got the sewers and you've got Shurfall Glade. It is very atmospheric. It feels very woodsy and druid rangery, with, especially with the guy practicing the arrows. I just don't think it's really a city. Anyway, that's my list. Did I disparage your favorite city? Or maybe it just wasn't high enough on the list. Maybe some of the ones that you thought sucked were too high on my list. Tell me what you think. Tell me what would be your best and your worst. And tell me what other countdowns I should do because I like these countdown things. I like the Kunark video. I like doing these. So if you've got an idea, I'm listening.